Hey everyone, so today we'll be talking about the Halo 6 rec system that's going to be in the next game. A lot of um, video makers and YouTubers have already covered Frank O'Connor's comments because 343 was um, monitoring EA's recent uh, terrible <laughs> microphone transaction system and I firmly believe that Halo 6 is going to have, again, the rec system that's in place, but I just want to talk about a couple tweaks I would like to see but I know for a fact that it's definitely going to be in there and I'm going to talk about why, so let's get into it. So first and foremost, I was very curious as to how Gold Packs did and luckily enough, I was in Vidage Twitch chat a couple months ago and Hatred, a 343X employee, was in there and the topic of rec packs were in discussion. A lot of people said, oh they suck, they suck, they suck and I know that a lot of the uh, game reviewers and a lot of people hate the rec pack system. I didn't care personally too much because I play Arena. Um, I do like to go into Warzone occasionally and I just play it and it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me because it doesn't affect all game modes. That's apart from the point. I remember that Hatred said that when 343 dipped their toes in the water with the microtransaction system in Halo 5, they really didn't anticipate how many uh, gold rec packs or um, sales they would get for the rec pack system. Now I know he probably couldn't give me exact details because obviously that's very private information but he did say that it, it, the return they got from the gold packs exceeded expectations like it was exponential how many gold packs the, the community bought, used um, and just the overall reception of it in the stats and figure side of things. As a business that would be considered a slam dunk. They would they had a set like level of how many they would like to get and they smashed that. They absolutely destroyed it. So that in of itself would be enough of a reason to include microtransactions or at least the rec system back into Halo 6. Now is this a good thing? I mean, the rec system for me is really irrelevant because I'm going to play to 150, 151, 152. When a new game comes out as a YouTuber, I'm going to grind the absolute hell out of it and I'm going to have all the recs before everyone else and I'm going to be a huge advantage. But you look at a casual player, someone who likes to play a variety of games, just the average gamer, what is going to happen for them? I know Brad Phantom, who I play with all the time, he only has... He has like level 130, 131, and he doesn't have the Halo 2 BR yet. And I see a lot of comments on a lot of posts, even other YouTube videos that have covered this topic. And it's all the same thing, look I'm level 100, I don't have this, 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 and it just entices them to spend money on gold packs to keep trying and getting it. There's a reason why they have 152 armor and helmet variants that are totally irrelevant that you're never going to use. Because if it wasn't in there, you'd complete it within about a month or so and they wouldn't earn any money from it. Now look, they justify having the rec pack system because they can pump money into the Halo World Championship Series, which is a good thing. They can have the team packs, which is a very, very good thing. Um, because you can support your pro players and your pro teams. Um, and you also get the free DLC. Now this is something I really wanted to cover and um, just break that down because I know a lot of the other YouTubers that have covered the rec system absolutely hate it. They think it's stupid, it's pointless, but the thing is, as someone who had played all of the Halo games, Halo 2 multiplayer map pack came in a disc. Uh, that's so old school. I actually loved it because you can install it on multiple Xboxes. That's beside the point. Um, Halo 2 was very popular, so you could play the DLC map packs very easily. Halo 3, Heroic, Legendary, Cold Storage, and the Mythic 1 and 2 DLC. Halo 3 was very, very popular. So you played these maps, and the playlists that were dedicated to them had a population. But then you moved to Halo Reach. And I remember the DLC that was the Noble map pack first. Um, I don't even remember the names of the other ones. But since the population diminished and the interest wasn't there for Halo Reach, it was very hard. Like the dedicated playlists towards the DLC, they were high for the first week. Then they dropped to 200, 100, it got to 50. They even made a dedicated DLC playlist and it was dead because no one bought the DLC. Halo 4, the DLC was absolutely dead. That's probably like one of the best things about the Master Chief Collection, by the way, that you can play the DLC maps. Um, that a lot of people didn't get to experience because there just wasn't the population for it. So I see a lot of people on Twitter say they'd prefer the alternative. They would prefer to pay $15 to $20 for a DLC if it meant there was no microtransactions in the game. And for a big popular game, I can totally support that because it'll definitely be the population for it. But just think with Halo 5, with all the stuff that has been introduced, 
not the weapons, but the maps themselves, you would never have played any of the def more maps than the just the default ones. Because it would be literally impossible when the population has dropped, because as it is now, it's basically dead. Um, or close to it. You would never play these maps. You'd have people who are just picking up the game, and you'd get the default maps. But that would be it. It's like trying to get the DLC achievements on Reach. It, it's, it's impossible. You cannot get them, because you have to search with a whole group of people who all have the DLC. And it's practically impossible to find <laughs> 12 people to get, say, the Infection achievement, where you have to get, I think it's an assassination, um, as an infected player, or something like that, but it has to be on the uh, specific map. So sure, the rec system itself could be tweaked. That's no question. It could be made a lot more fr uh, player friendly, but it has to be in Halo 6, just so you can have that free DLC. You've got to have that new content to keep the people coming into the game. Now I understand, 100 gigabytes for Halo 5, it's huge. It's an absurd number. Um, I'm not sure if that's because they have uh, not compress the updates uh, or what the deal is because that's an absurd amount of data it's like rendering an AVI instead of MP4 video editors you know what I mean by that it's a huge difference in file size that's gonna do it guys um, I really wanted to just cover why Halo 6 will have direct system and kind of like why it is important and why it's not necessarily such a bad thing um, if you'd like to make it, me to make a video on some improvements that could be made to the existing rec system, I'd love to make that as well. And I can have these to kind of two videos as like a reference that made me go to three four three. Um, if you know, I love just helping out the community, and helping out you guys. Um, but I really just want to hear from you guys. Do you agree with what I said? Do you feel like um, having free DLC is an important thing? Um, if you would change the rec system, what would you change about it? Why would you change that? Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys got a little bit out of this video. That's something you didn't know. Um, something was informative. And I hope you all enjoyed it. So I'll see you guys in a couple days in my next video. And see you then. Bye.